You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly show for video games, movies, TV shows, comics, tech news, and more. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Samantha Cross, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Hey everybody, you're listening to Nerd Overload, the pop and geek culture show that lost two of its regular hosts, but we picked up a stray off the street. I'm Josh. And I'm Sam. Cody and Samantha aren't here this week, but we called in a ringer. So uh, everybody, I'd like to introduce Jordan Taylor. Welcome to the show, Jordan. Thanks. It's great to be here. All right. Awesome. So hey, we got a great show for you this week. Thank you all for tuning in. We have a bunch of news to go over, but first, let's talk about some things we have been checking out. Who wants to go first? So I was looking at myself in the mirror this morning, so I was checking that out. Hey, oh, nice jokes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. I went and saw Godzilla King of the Monsters. So did we. So did we. Yay, something we can talk about. Yeah, let's talk about Godzilla. What'd you think? I liked it a lot. I like big, dumb monster fights, but I could care less about the humans. Right? That was like my biggest thing with like the last one was not enough monsters. I rewatched the first one. The 2014 one. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I rewatched that one, and I forgot how much they cut away from the sweet, sweet monster action. There's, like, almost no monsters in yeah. that. It's basically just the third act. and It's not then... even, like, the third act. It's, like, the last 20 minutes of the whole movie yeah. is, like, you get Godzilla. Yeah, I remember walking out of that movie and feeling like I wish I would have just watched Pacific Rim again because it would have been more interesting. Pacific Rim is a great, dumb movie. It, <laughs> it is. is. <laughs> yeah. But no, this one, again, I uh, it definitely added more monster fights, and well, that's good. Yeah, I would hope. Uh, yeah, glad to see uh, Ghidorah and Rodan and all of them. Um, I actually would like that they called Ghidorah Monster Zero for like oh, the I first know. half of the movie. That's a nice callback to the originals. And uh, I was so... How spoilery do we want to get on this? You know, let's get fairly spoilery. Let's okay. not like... I mean, how much spoiler are you going to give for like <laughs> a Godzilla movie? Oh, they fight at the end. Yeah, true. And I, I guess... It, I mean, it was kind of big, but not as big as, say, something like Avengers or another Marvel movie or something. And it's not getting huge. Rev- it's, it's definitely it's, felt like it was a movie that was made for like us who like that genre of film. Basically. So, yeah, let's let's get spoiler okay. with Sp- it. What, what the heck? Spoiler warning for Godzilla, King of the Monsters, people. So what I was going to say is mm-hmm. I was actually surprised that they called out and said Ghidorah was from space. Yeah, that was interesting. I was that like, was... wow, they actually did it. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think they were going to. I thought there was going to be some weird terrestrial version or purpose for it. They're go- I thought they were going to go the Mudo route where it's like, oh, it's just, hey, there's some monsters from Earth. Yeah. <sighs> nope. They're like, nope. He straight up fell from the stars. Yeah. I was sad that Mothra died. I liked her the best. Yeah, but it's not the first time Mothra has went poof in a movie. That was kind mm-hmm. of Mothra's whole deal is that Mothra would always start whatever movie she was in as like... Um, larval state and then like grew up grow up into the moth Mm -hmm. so they could always come back and explain that oh yeah she that's her whole deal is that she just keeps coming back yeah she's Mm -hmm. like a like a like a phoenix type of bug i guess that makes sense yeah i I love the subtle nod to the tiny uh, the twins the tiny twins yeah the 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 ladies that are they're all twins her Mm -hmm. sister and her and their parent yeah from from the original from the mothra thing yeah 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 that, that was pretty cool. And like the, I, I did like the covers of some of the classic songs from the films, like mm-hmm. the Mothra theme. Yeah. And, and the Godzilla, like, bah, 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 bah. Well, like, they did that a little bit in the first one as yeah, well. Yeah, but, but this they, was way, this is like they, way more. Yeah, they definitely hit it a lot better with this one. Rodan <laughs> looked like Rodan. Yeah. Rodan reminded me so much of Starscream, which is funny because he didn't say, like, none of the monsters said anything. But he might as well have been Starscream. But like the way he, like <laughs> the mouth always kind of curled up in that weird, like creepy smile and was like always like so like cowardly mm-hmm. whenever he's like sucking up to whoever was the, the, the alpha. alpha. Yeah. Reminded me so much of Starscream from Transformers. It's- also on the same line when they had the Mothra and Rodan fight and Mothra stabs him through the chest with a stinger stinger. And they have the like the horror movie shot. Where like the final girl is like stabbing the you know getting the final kill on mm-hmm. the on the whatever the monster or whatever and like it it holds for a beat like the like Mothra was going to say some like cool one liner but it doesn't it just goes Rah! yeah <laughs> I liked the monster designs for everybody mm. I thought they they felt all really the updates were good like very accurate mm-hmm. I mean Godzilla was still a little chunky yeah but I liked that from the last movie. Oh, sure. I didn't yeah. care for his, like, rhino elephant-esque legs. Like, they seem, like, real thick with no toes. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> but anything is better than the weird big chin iguana from the Matthew Broderick one. Oh, well, sure. Yeah. God, I hate that movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like that they name checked a lot of old monsters from when they're showing the map of like the 17 different uh, titans Creatures. that are popping up. Yeah. They name check a lot of them. I wish that they would have used some of those as like the ones that were sprouting up like the spider and the mammoth thing. Those are uh, those re- aren't tied into any previous thing. No, the spider is brand new. The spider is in Monster Island. Kaijupedia says that it is. Well, the spider. That's true. The spider did pop up in in Monster Island, but like the mammoth thing isn't from any previous mm-hmm. Godzilla movie. They could have used like any of the other. Yeah. I mean, there's a million of those monsters. They could have used any of them. Yeah, but most of those shot. you only really see in Monster Island, though. Yeah, it's true. I liked how the nuclear meltdown Godzilla was a nice touch from Final Wars. Yes, yes. I thought he looked like that. I also thought he looked kind of like Space Godzilla a little bit. If he had those if giant he, crystals. The only thing he wasn't mi- was missing were those giant shoulder, dumb-looking shoulder pad crystals. Yeah. So, if you notice, we're talking an awful lot about the monsters and not saying a single thing about the people. <laughs> or the plot. Or the plot. The plot was very paper thin. Yes, yes, the, it was. The plot is, hey, we have an excuse to go to this other island, and here's a big monster. Well, and the main char- the main bad character's reasoning was dumb, and it sort of ruined the whole plot. And the fact that the main villain was actually like was the was like a whole red herring thing. Oh, yeah. sure. Well, yeah, I mean, her whole thing about like, oh no, my kid died because of Godzilla, so I'm gonna release more monsters so they kill more people. Like that's. Stupid logic. And then the minute she released more monsters, she goes, "Oh no, we've released more monsters." Wait, no, they're killing people. What well, no, I done? Like, it's like they realize, like, "Oh wait, we're not doing this anymore. This is this is Monster Zero's fault. He's waking them all up himself." Mm-hmm. But Monster Zero was doing the exact thing that they wanted to do. So, well, no, because they the, the whole thing like they kept talking about was the fact that they were going to wake them up one at a time. Oh, and like, then yeah, Ghidorah is like, "Nope, everybody, everybody up, everybody, everybody up. We're going to camp." Huh. But yeah, uh, yeah, the the human stuff was just not Stupid. cool. The main guy looked like he was in the process of pooping himself. <laughs> he did make like, some stupid faces. Every scene, like <laughs> every scene, he was like. <sighs> and I loved how he like was like so angry against Godzilla for like half the movie, and then he's like, you know, I think I need to root for the big lizard now. I hate Godzilla, but he must win. Yeah, pretty much. The only human I really cared about was... Ken Watanabe's Ken character. Ken Watanabe. Yeah. He definitely had the most range mm-hmm. of anybody in the film, which is hard to say for a Ken Watanabe in any film. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, mean, I like the dude. Hey, I, this is a big summer for uh, Watanabe, though, because he's also the uh, chief of police in Detective Pikachu. This is true. This is true. Yeah, he's doubling up on those paychecks right now. Um, That's pretty Yeah, awesome. getting that nerd check. Yeah, heck mm-hmm. yeah. And then, like, the range of emotion he had when his assistant from the first movie got eaten by Ghidorah, like, straight up right there. Oh, yeah. Was she in the first movie? Yeah. Really? Yeah. The girl that got squished? She got bit. She got, like, ate by the head. Oh, okay. That's not who I'm thinking of. I was thinking of the dark-haired scientist that got squished when they were in, like, Antarctica. She's the she's the lead in Shape of Water. Shape, yeah. Or, as I know her better from, the Jane Austen persuasion. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I do like Jane Austen movies. Mm-hmm. Millie Bobby Brown's character was completely unneeded unnecessary which one was that one that's the girl the young girl the oh, yeah. oh the, yeah the one that eventually lures Ghidorah that to Boston have, and that could have been anybody mm. that that they could have eliminated that character completely and had the the um female lead what, like whatever her name is her, her, mm-hmm. po- her poor point yeah right. that's yeah. yeah but like we said the human parts of these movies are stupid oh yeah but no. there were certainly a lot more monster Definite more monster. Really mm-hmm. good music. Yeah. Hey, did you notice that they mentioned Kong Skull Island a lot? They did. And you see Do King you notice Kong. Because you... they drilled it in like five <laughs> or six times yeah. that they said, hey, there's also all these monsters are popping up and also Kong Skull Island. The fact that Kong never woke up. He never went to sleep. He's just been there. He's yeah. It's like, hey, by the way, did you know Kong? Kong's in these movies. He's did... patiently waiting for his sequel. Did you all see Kong Skull Island? Because that's in this se- universe i like like that movie. (laughs) oh it's fine it's it's a fine movie but it just seems like they really really made it a point to remind everyone that that movie exists well i definitely think the next one's going to probably be the the godzilla versus king kong film that they've been building since yep 
since that after credit scene of Kong Skull Island of you get the dr- you get the Godzilla roar. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Which and I guess I, one of the older characters in Monarch is a different actor but he's playing an older version of one of the guys from, from Kong Skull Island. From Skull Island. Mm. Yeah. It's been a while since I watched that movie. Yeah, and a the fact bit that for me too. Yeah. and the fact that when I, when I rewatched uh, the the 2014 Godzilla, I forgot that actually Monarch was mentioned as an organization in that film. Mm-hmm. I completely glossed over that. So then when I watched Kong Skull Island, I never really put the two together until the end the end credit scene. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh yeah. But no, would you, would you say that this movie's worth oh, checking out? I for definitely, folks? I definitely say it's it's worth it. It's it's got a lot of stuff going on and a lot of neat visuals and mm-hmm. like I mean, when. The, Oh no! I'm no, sorry. go ahead. No, you. I was just gonna say maybe don't don't pay full like price for it. I mean, I paid five dollars. That's what it's, we did. That's yeah. what we did as well. Yeah. Oh no, we weren't paying full price for this movie. No. I mean, it's a good movie, and I it's was good ex- enough. Yes. Yes. I'll say. I'll put it that way. It's good enough. They're certainly doing a better job building their kaiju universe movies better than DC is building their or, cinema. Or <laughs> the dark universe that's dead. Like yeah. dead, dead. You know which one that one was, right? No, the mummy. Oh no! Oh, oh that yes. was the worst. Yeah, yeah, that was supposed to be the first in a multi well, movie, tech... right? Because Jekyll was in there, and yeah. that was technically, stupid. technically, yep. Dracula Untold was supposed to be the first. It was one. supposed to, and then it got retconned out because no one liked it. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> they had two starting, two first movies in the monster universe, and neither of them were good. They both were not. Great. Yep, you yeah. had the Tom Cruise mummy movie with references to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde mm-hmm. and references to vampires because there's a bunch of vampire skulls on cat and cabinets and stuff. And yeah. And it's just like, ugh, that movie was so bad. And then like there was and then Johnny Depp was supposed to be the invisible man and the whole thing is just dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was Yeah. We've talked about this before when I watched the mummy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what would they have okay? Would they have introduced like Frankenstein into that? Would they would they have used Frankenstein like was it Unchained or Unbound or the one where Two Face from oh, Dark Knight right. was was a very bad Frankenstein? I forgot about that movie. Yeah, everyone has because it's very bad. <laughs> I don't think I ever actually watched it. I saw the trailers for. It. I'm like, oh, that looks bad, and then I skipped it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, don't watch it. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> is there a way that like? Shared universes are starting to become the norm. They're they're unfortunately kind of getting a little too played out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Is there a way that they could like do a universal monster shared universe and not make it weird and bad at this point? Can they course correct at this point? Do you think make a live action Shaggy and the Reluctant Werewolf? (laughs) We're all just racing buggy cars. Oh, jinkies. <laughs> I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know if people really care that much See, about the universal, the, the universal monster movies. You know what? I would almost agree with you, except people sure did love Shape of Water, and that is the closest thing to a Gilman movie we're going to get. Mm, or the Abe Sapien spinoff film. Although we were supposed to get <laughs> a Creature of the Black Lagoon movie with Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Where they couldn't decide whether she was going to play the human character or the fish or the fish character. <laughs> Why not both? What? Why not throw the wrench in there? She's both. Yeah. I mean, CGI it up. Why she's not? A, she's a werefish. She's what the, the whole cast. Yeah. <laughs> it's the meet the clumps of Universal Monsters. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Just make it a reboot of uh, Zat. Have you guys ever heard of Zat? No. No. That sounds oh, awful you'd watch. It is a bad, <laughs> bad 60s movie where a scientist turns himself into a catfish monster. And wow. yeah, it's very bad. And he like gets depressed halfway through and like starts like just l- lackadaisically like destroying his lab. And a lot of the prints have like bad matting. So like the guy in the suit, uh, you could tell like one day he just felt like being relaxed. So because the matting is weird, you see his feet where you're where normally you <laughs> wouldn't. There'd usually be the black bar on the top and bottom. And he's just wearing sneakers because he just <laughs> wanted to relax that day. <laughs> yeah. Grab Marv Tarkin in his slippers. Yeah, right. Because he hated those military boots. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> oh, that sounds delightful. Yeah. That sounds awful. <laughs> oh, it's it's. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like the Universal monster movies. Mm-hmm. I feel like maybe if they would have did it in the same vein as like when they did like the Brendan Fraser mummy, mm-hmm. that would have been the yeah. time to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Because that movie is fun and great, and I don't know. 
couldn't have tied it in with Bram Stoker or anything like that. But. I was I was actually just gonna say why not why not tie it in with the Bram Stoker Dracula get Gary Oldman and Brendan Fraser in there up in the mix and like Keanu Reeves is a rem film. There was a Frankenstein movie with Robert De Niro as the monster. It wasn't great, but it exists, and it was around that same time period. Tie hmm. all that together, because at least you'd have something. If you could do it with that same kind of feel as the original Mummy, you could probably reboot that series. But the problem with the Tom Cruise Mummy is that it was real dark and gross, too, and too like serious. it was too scary. Yeah, and then I don't think just you're gonna dumb. Well, also dumb and badly acted. But I mean, I don't think anybody wants to see an actual scary Frankenstein movie. No. But if you could get some of the get some jokes in there, like tongue in cheek, like yeah, like yeah, like the mummy, like, like yeah, make like a, a mummy because the mummy is the mummy does have its cool action scenes, sure, and actually makes you think Brendan Fraser could be an action movie star. Listen, <laughs> that mummy movie is more of an Indiana Jones movie than exactly. the crystal than Crystal Skull. Exactly, like, exactly. Yeah. Now, too too bad the other mummy movies aren't that great. Oh, the uh, mummy two, and then the and then the dragon mummy, the dragon, the tomb of the dragon emperor. Yeah, which then the mummy two spawned the whole scorpion king side franchise. <laughs> no, that's unfortunate. <laughs> the fact they they did a, another scorpion king recently that doesn't even have the rock in it. And Billy Zane in it. <laughs> hey, remember when he was the phantom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Back when pulp movies were coming out, like oh yeah, the phantom and. Uh, the Shadow. <laughs> the Rocketeer. Rocketeer. Mm. Rocketeer's pretty great, though. Rocketeer I do, I do, is great. I do love Rocketeer. It made me want to jetpack so bad and to punch Nazis. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. What's his name? The bad guy and the Rocketeer. Timothy Dalton is yeah. so good in that as like a, a yeah. Errol Flynn stand-in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He is so good in that. It's yeah. great. So that was back of like fun, campy 90s See, that's the thing. You... Pseudo superhero movies. Like, that's, that's like, the thing. Like The Mummy and stuff. It was right. great. You need mm-hmm. to bring the camp back. Yeah, if you're going to have like a... You can't do these kind of movies seriously. You got to be goofy with it. You got to be tongue in cheek. Mm-hmm. Like one eye winking at the camera and the other eye like, hey, this is this is a real thing. Wink. You know, yeah, like, make, like that's make, the way to, make, like, to do this make, stuff. Just, just make some dumb jokes. Like Benny. Benny was one of the best parts of The Mummy. Benny was great. Yeah. <sighs> I wish that actor did more. Right? Yeah. You know, the first thing I saw him in was in a horror movie. I don't watch a ton of horror movies, but there's a... Uh, have you ever heard of the... Uh, the it's like the people inside the walls or the children inside oh, the walls uh, or was that the the the, ch- the children under the staircase the people or the people under the stairs yeah that's that's it yeah with the the weird mutants under the in the basement yeah benny played roach the one that escaped from the from under the stairs oh, and wasn't right. into the walls right, he was right, like right, the right, heroic right. one yeah 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 man that's an interesting movie it is ice t was in that <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't ice t or ice cube it's one of those two or ll cool j <laughs> One of the one of those one of those cold themed rappers. Yeah, which one was in? Which one was the one that was in? Are we there yet? Uh, Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Yeah, that's Ice Cube. Ice Cube was in it very yeah. briefly. Yeah. Yep. All right. Oh man, we have dominated this with with Godzilla and other talk. Yeah. Uh, do you have uh, another really quick check them? Not really. No. Jordan, do you have another check them out? I'm halfway through season eight of Doctor Who. Oh yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Wait, which one? It's the first Capaldi season. Oh, yeah. Okay, I can talk about this one. I am not loving Capaldi as the doctor. He gets better. The writing, Does he? that writing in that first season is really bad. Yeah. S- season nine's where he really kind of picks up, right? Yeah, his stride's really there. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I liked Tennant so much and Smith so much. Oh, oh don't get me then... wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love Tennant, but I liked Capaldi as the as a kind of a back to the grumpy older doctor. Yeah, I guess probably because I started with the reboot. I've never seen the old, old one or the original ones, but... I don't know. Like I'm still watching them, and like the the shows are still good, but she's, you're still got I, we still got Clara, right? Yeah, yeah, but she's been kind of oddly wishy washy lately because now Danny Pink is in the mix there. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't do care not, for him. Do not like Danny Pink, and he only gets worse as that season goes on. Oh, good. Yeah, look forward to that. Yes. Yeah, but then but but then we get Missy. Missy is pretty Missy's great. Missy's the best. Don't spoil it because I don't not... think you're at the point. No, Missy's the best though. Okay, I don't think I've seen any with her yet. Yeah, she's not toward like she's not tilled toward the end though. Okay. They teased her in the first episode. Oh, and then... she has shown up a couple times, but they just like she's just kind of there. The end. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
But yeah, the writing gets definitely gets better. Like that first episode, and they added like cartoony sound effects and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I was so angry. Yeah, that weird clown hammer, like when he gets bonked in the head or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's been a little, it's been a little rough. It, it gets it definitely gets a lot better. Okay, good to know. I'll stick with it then. The only other thing I've really done was uh, the other night at work, I had some downtime, and I got to watch rewatch the movie Ed Wood. The, oh, the man, Tim I Burton. I haven't watched movie. that Have in you guys... forever. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I. You know, I love that movie. I just it's it's barely a biopic. Like it's not really. Yeah. They they introduce some of the ideas like the way Ed Wood met Bella Lugosi and you know did Plan Nine and that sort of thing. But like the timeline is super far off and everything is like way heightened. It's like filmed like it was a movie from back then. Like. Right. Yeah, Johnny Depp probably doing one of his best performances. The ones that I like the best, where he, everything is de- delivered like this, and we're gonna put on a show. <laughs> it's gonna be great, everybody, and like everybody is just doing so well. And I mean, like you know, Martin Landau is great as Bella Lugosi, mm-hmm. like super yeah. good. Uh, Bill Murray, like kind of slumming it a little bit, but he's there. And he's doing great. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> is yeah. it is it black and white? That it's movie? black and white. Yeah, I remember mm-hmm. thinking that was interesting that they took that route to make it feel like it was actually an older from film. that time period. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Another another black and white film that Johnny Depp did back in the day was called Dead Man. Dead Man. Yeah, I've seen Dead Man. Mm, I haven't seen that one. It's a weird kind of western. Hmm. Yeah. It's not a good movie. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of what put us a bunch of folks off when Ed Wood was first Just released Dead Man. because people saw it and like, oh, it's another Johnny Depp black and white movie. This is going to be weird, like Dead Man. Hmm. It wasn't like good weird either. It wasn't like a like a, a like an Edward Scissorhands kind of. It's like mm-hmm. there are some things that are kind of problematic, and I'm just like, ooh. Yeah, you know, I actually go back and forth between Ed Wood and Pee Wee's Big Adventure as my favorite Tim Burton movie, honestly. Mm-hmm. Which is weird because those are like at the outset they're not very Tim Burtony. This like, is true. Most folks think of like, oh, Edward Scissorhands or Batman or like some of the more modern stuff, Sleepy Hollow. But go back and watch some of those things. There's some weird stuff in, in both Ed it's, Wood and in it's, Pee-wee's. It's back before he went like full Burton. Y- yeah, before, yeah. It's baby Burton. Well, yeah. back when before he was more, he cared more about his artistic vision see, I versus his artistic image. See, I don't think it's that as much as it was back before studios gave him carte blanche to just do whatever mm. where he still had to kind of rein it in a little bit because producers and like studios like were it. kind of like well this is kind of weird but all right yeah you know by the time you get to like alice in wonderland Ugh. or like charlie and the chocolate factory which Ugh. is just the worst uh, i mean it has that movie has some good ideas the oompa loompas should have carried that movie away the uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Deep Roy did a great job as he he was putting in the work of ten people because he was literally ten people. Yeah, I like I liked the I liked the the kiss sequence. Yeah, in that movie that was pretty good. You know, that movie had some pretty interesting ideas about getting into Wonka's dad. Yeah, as like a kind of super serious dentist yeah. type. And I mean, Christopher Lee, you can't be Christopher exactly. Lee. Exactly. But like, yeah, that movie just wasn't. Mm-mm. Nah hate that movie yeah i don't think i've seen that one or if i have it was forgettable enough it came out it came out before alice in wonderland when he was the mad hatter yeah i liked the first alice in wonderland but Mm. mostly for the costuming and stuff oh yeah the costume is good but it's it's another one of those i'm tim burton and this is my girlfriend helena bottom carter and here's my boyfriend johnny depp look at me i'm weird and artsy we're doing weird things because it's weird times (laughs) yeah (laughs) Although you know, I haven't I I haven't seen Dumbo, and I usually yeah I know, I usually don't care so much about like the the Disney live action remakes of things, but I would be willing to give Dumbo a shot because there's some in the original cartoon. There's at least enough weird visual stuff like that. The the pink elephant like hallucination mm-hmm. sequence yeah. is enough to go okay. I wonder what Tim Burton does with this. It's probably not what my brain thinks it should be, <laughs> but in my mind's eye, it seems pretty cool. Sure, it was trippy and weird in the Disney original, so I'm sure Tim Burton can handle that part pretty well. But also, I just have always hated Dumbo. Well, there's not much yeah. story to Dumbo. I, would, I don't yeah, know how I was they never, were able to. I was never a fan of Dumbo either. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, they would have to, like, either that movie's criminally short 
or they would have had to add like a whole secondary plot to Dumbo. Well, it's got those little kids in it now, right? I yeah. think those kids oh, are part of like, they're yeah. probably... It's got the kids versus the mouse. Oh, yeah. never mind. They've got peoples in it now. No, yeah. And that good. angry... The girl, the girl gives Dumbo the feather instead of the mouse. Yeah, right. So now there's people characters. Okay, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. I don't know. I'm just waiting for Steve Irwin to pop up in the Lion King movie. Steve Irwin? It's a joke of adding a, say, a human... Isn't he dead? Yeah, a hu- <laughs> A human character to a movie that doesn't have any human characters in it. <laughs> he just walks through. He's like, Crikey! How could you call that movie a live action movie? Exactly. It's yeah, that's not. the part that gets me mad. It's not. It's it's another animated film. Yeah. And at that point, what's the point? Yeah. What's the point? Right. All right. Well, hey, we've gone ahead and made it to break. So let's go ahead and stop, listen to a little bit of music. And when we come back, we'll talk about some news. Hey everybody, we're back. That was a cover of the Blue Oyster Cult's Godzilla by Bear McCreary featuring Serge Tankin. Tankin, yeah, something like that. Famous from being the lead guy from System of Down and then his solo stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember his soul stuff from a few years ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Actually, it's been more than a few years ago. Honestly, listening it. to it, it doesn't sound that much different than System of Down. That's very true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty obvious why we played that. Yep, you it's know, from Godzilla. the it's from the new Godzilla soundtrack, and mm-hmm. it's a good cover. I like the original song as well. Oh, I do too. They're yeah. both good. Yep. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into some news, and I think we're gonna go ahead and do the big one first. Yep. So this past week. Game Freak and Nintendo put out a 16-minute Pokemon Direct. The directs are kind of like their press con- like pre-recorded press conferences, basically, mm-hmm. that they do every once in a while. A lot of the times Nintendo does theirs kind of ahead of E3, since E3 is next week. Mm-hmm. So also, hey, next week, get ready. A lot of... Video game news. A lot of game news. It's the San the Diego week. Comic-Con of video games, basically. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, there was some Pokemon news, and they're talking about the brand new pair of games that's going to be out for the switch yeah. pokemon sword and shield mm-hmm. so yeah let's talk about some of the the things they talked about well um being this is the first mainline pokemon game that is on a home console instead of a handheld mm-hmm. it's kind of a bit it's kind of a big thing it and they're kind of a big deal and they're definitely trying some new stuff yeah yeah so some of the well first off they uh gave a lot more detail of the region that mm-hmm. the game is going to be set yep, in each the- each game's region is kind of very, very loosely based on like actual real world areas. areas. Yeah, this generation is the UK. The UK, basically. Woo. Yeah, a lot of really cool like ivy covered buildings and something that very clearly looked like Big Ben. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of the main outfits they keep showing for a trainer is like a little Scottish hat and plaid skirt and stuff. And mm-hmm. yeah, it was pretty cool. A lot of bagpipe music kind of filtering into the normal Pokemon music. Mm-hmm. A lot of soccer looking stuff in the battle fields. Yeah, a lot of soccer looking yep, stuff. The the yeah, big yeah. um the big Pokemon gyms are these huge audience filled arenas. Yeah, basically. and they look like soccer pitches. They look mm-hmm. like soccer pitches you'd see in place uh, the place of the world where soccer is a big big thing. Yeah. And even the outfits that you see, like the lead trainers mm-hmm. wear, look a lot like soccer uniforms. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Kind of all variations of that. Like, like the the like the super like main ba- like guy you're supposed to beat, Leon. Yeah. The the champion, the, the national champion, or whatever. <laughs> Looks like if David Beckham wore like a king's cape. And yeah. A, and a dumb hat. <laughs> and a beard that was drawn on with an eyebrow pencil. Oh yeah. It's pretty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When yeah. will Pokemon? When will Pokemon get facial hair right? <sighs> Not want, this time. I want a bearded trainer. Darn it! <laughs> that would be pretty great. <laughs> Do you remember in X and Y, like you could add like mustaches and beards to your trainer, but they were like pencil thin. They yeah, looked they looked like, like they looked like when you add facial hair to your Nintendo Mies. Yeah, kind of. They're like these little tiny, uh-huh. dirty, like discolored parts. <laughs> Gross. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your face is just kind of dirty. <laughs> hobo trainer yeah but to be fair if you really think about traveling pokemon trainers they are essentially hobos oh yeah no (laughs) they have no home they just walk around and fight people (laughs) they're like ryu from street fighter (laughs) uh anyway other parts of the like uh there's female professor that is like the person you interact with yeah, for the Mag- game magnolia so yep, it keeps pre- with the uh the tree the tree themed scientists mm-hmm, uh, main mm-hmm. scientist so that's pretty and cool. i'm sure she'll be studying the the new dynamic in the game which seems- is called dynamax yes so for folks who don't know uh the last couple of generations of the game there's been like a gimmick kind of thing 
Yes, a new feature that is in any other of the ones. Yeah, a new feature kind of thing. Like a couple, a uh, couple of uh, generations ago, it was the uh, Mega Evolution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can ev- evolve certain things a little bit higher up than temporarily. More, temporarily, the last one was Z moves. Is that what they were called? Yes. Where you can like a one-time use only, like super, super duper, like, like super fighting move. game move. Yeah. Yeah, and this one is called Dynamax. And weren't there Z moves? And Mega Evolutions in the one game? Yeah, and chances are the Mega Evolutions showed up uh, in post-game content Mm. for the last gen. So chances are when you beat the game uh, in this one, you'll get the access to like all of the previous versions of like the special stuff. It's going to be a lot. So any Dynamaxing allows you to basically supercharge any Pokemon you have. Mm -hmm. Uh, And make them giant. Yeah, they become like (laughs) huge like... They're Godzillas. They're Godzillas. They're Pokey Godzillas. They're giant ka- kaiju, and it's pretty great. And they temporarily get sh- for like three turns. Or three something turns. Like that. You can do it once per fight, mm-hmm. and uh, that's going to be the new thing. Yeah, they didn't really go into too many details about the what it does. What exactly. it does, but it it actually looked like it changed a couple of the attack moves. Yeah, uh, which is pretty interesting. But yeah, I think it's kind of great to see these giant, giant versions of like these little otherwise tiny uh, little buddies. Oh man, well, especially I'm... the ones like Diglett, who's kind of stupid to begin with, <laughs> and now he's enormous. Yeah, oh, no. everyone will tower in fear of my Dynamax Magikarp. <laughs> oh yes, oh yeah. Just you think flopping, Gyarados is scary? Flopping around. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> or uh, Dynamax uh, Metapod. Mm-hmm. <laughs> World's largest Voltorb. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's going to be kind of an interesting kind of mechanic. I'm interested in seeing how that kind of goes. Uh, another thing that this game is adding is temporary, like uh, limited online multiplayer, which is the first time they've ever done anything yeah, kind so of like that. In the world or in the game, there are places in the world or a place in the world that's kind of a big open it's area. It's called the wild called area. The, called the wild area, yep. And Which you, is new as well because you have a 360 uh, camera control. It's like almost, it's like almost like Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it's almost of. like an open world Pokemon game, mm-hmm. temporarily. Yeah, but you'll be able to see different Pokemon walking around instead of just randomly going into a battle with them. Uh, you can, and also another thing, there is weather effects and whatnot in the in the wild, and that affects what Pokemon you find, when you find them, stuff like that. That is pretty cool. But anyway, this uh, online multiplayer thing, you can actually go and fight giant, giant, like, specialty. Yeah, there are areas around the map marked by a towering red light where you and three other trainers go into max raid battles against Dynamax versions of Pokemon and get an attempt to capture them. And this seems like it is taken nearly directly from Pokemon Go. Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah, it it looks like a... It looks like a Pokemon Go raid, mm-hmm. it but, does. but it'll probably play better. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd hope so, yeah. Although the raids, they're, they've gotten pretty, pretty they're all good right. yeah. for the most part. They used to be kind of buggy, but they're okay now. Yeah, they've definitely worked on those. So it looks pretty cool. Yeah. So they also showed off a couple of the new uh, Pokemon. There's going to be like a ton. There's actually a leak. There's like going to be over 100 new great, ones this great. time around. Now we're getting to the point where we're almost 1,000 It's Pokemon. almost a, It's almost 1,000, yeah. But... Uh, yeah, so uh, so Jordan, what were some of the uh, the the new ones that they showed off? I liked Wooloo the best, the <laughs> tiny the tiny round sheep that that doesn't like to fight and just rolls away. Yep, it's pretty great. <laughs> it is super super good. It has like these cool kind of dreadlock looking things. Yes, I also like the sad sad little frog. Oh, Sobble. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the the, the water starter. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's pretty cute. Yeah. I what were some of the other ones that they showed off? There was uh, uh there's Corviknight. Corviknight, yeah. The the raven Pokemon. Yeah, that looks like a giant knight. Yeah, he's, mm-hmm. a, he's like a giant bird with black armor. Mm-hmm. And not only is he a new version of Pokemon, but he's also a travel system within the region. He's like the taxi system. Yeah, yeah. there's like a almost like a police box with a handle on top, and it just comes down and grabs it and like flies you off. Yep. And you said it's kind of like... It's like the the weird dream sequence parts of the old, old Clash of the Titans where that girl has to go hang out with the gross swamp boy and he sends his bird to retrieve her. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
And they also showed off a grass type, the that flower thing that just turns into an old lady flower, kind of. Mm-hmm. It basically turns into a white puff dandelion style. Pretty much. Yeah. And the one with the rock jaws. I don't remember his name. Oh. oh uh, yeah, it just looks it, like a snapping turtle. Yeah, he's a snapping turtle. He's a ro- he's like a rock-eating snapping turtle. Yeah. Delicious. And then, let's see. The other two starters were Score Bunny and mm-hmm. Grokey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. With the way they designed Score Bunny, like with like the bandage across his nose and stuff, it almost looks like he would become another fighter, fight, fighting fire type. And I'm, mm. Yeah. But mm-hmm. we had that last gen. We've had that multiple gens. Actually, last gen was Fire Dark. Oh, and Cinderor is, is a dark? And was, was Fire Dark type. Because but he, he looks was, like a wrestle boy. He was a he was a heel wrestler, mm. so he was a bad guy wrestler. Ah, uh, but no, there's been the Chimchar. Chimchar is turned into a firefighting. There's Tepig, who is a firefighting, and the chicken. Mm. Man, I love that tiny chicken. That tiny chicken's pretty great. Torchic. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Yeah, he's super cute. <laughs> yeah, but this is the second gen in a row they've made me care about a grass starter. And until Sun and Moon, I didn't care about grass starters. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I had Rowlet, and now I've got Grokey and <laughs> my good, my good, good monkey boy. <laughs> there was a there was a team I made once. I called it my Planet of the Apes team, and oh, it was nice. all like ape Pokemon. <laughs> awesome, very cool. But no, I, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the last thing that they kind of showed off with this were the um, the box art Pokemon, the main like yes. legendary type yes. things, which they had really, really I cannot, complicated. They had really complicated. I cannot names. tell you their names. No, <sighs> one of them like they start both start with a Z, and Z- otherwise, Zana? no, that's that's a D and D thing. Whatever, it's Sword Dog and, sh- and, and Shield, shield dog. Face Dog, Shield Face Dog, <laughs> yeah, yep, yes. they look virtually the same except for one has armor on the front of its head. And the other one holds a sword in its mouth. The other one is just a dog holding a sword. I don't know. Does the does the sword evolve with the dog? Is it like is that sword permanently inside that dog's mouth, or is it just like a dog that found a sword one day and it was like, hey, I guess I'm a Pokemon now. He's he's playing <laughs> fetch with a knight. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> he's a good good squire boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Because like as far as legendaries go, I feel like it's kind of late. <laughs> it is a little They're lazy. A little lame, yeah. And they, well, we t- we were talking a little bit about this before the uh, before we started recording, and you mentioned they look a lot like Digimon. And yes. That's, and that seems like it's becoming more and more of a trend. Like as these games have gone on, they've become less and less like animal type things, and more and more like monsters with a bunch of stuff all over them. Yeah, monster with a thing. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, I love Digimon. I sure. do. They're great. I always felt the anime. The show was far superior to the Pokemon, Pokemon show. Yeah. But the games are the Digimon games aren't very good versus the Pokemon games being very good. Yeah. Yeah. But like basically. But yeah, the the art is it, like seriously, look up like Gururumon and you basically got these new legendaries. Mhm. And that's I mean, yeah, big big wolf thing. Yeah, big wolf thing. And yeah. it's I don't know. It's 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 a, it's a lazy design. Yeah. Well, and there's that whole other set of legendaries that already look like weird dogs. The one with the toilet paper head. And oh, I can't think of their names. Yeah. Oh, yeah, from Gen 2. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I don't care for those ones. It looks like somebody just put armor and a sword on one of those guys. and You know what? It kind of does. You're gave right. gave them horse noises. Yeah. <laughs> they do kind of have horse noises. Like, yeah. At least with the last le- the last gen of legendaries, they were two very distinctly different things. Mm-hmm. One is a big bat, and the other one is a, I don't care because it was sun. But <laughs> oh, that thing actually looks a lot like... These two dogs, because it was a lion with a giant mane. It looks like the shield dog. Oh, hmm. yeah. Again, lazy design. Yeah. Hmm. Forgot it was a lion. And now I'm mm-hmm. thinking of Saber Leomon. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jordan, I'm actually kind of interested in what, what you think overall of this Pokemon game. Because, I mean, your experience with Pokemon has really just kind of been go. Pretty right? much. I mean, yep. I mean, you, you played maybe the first couple 20 minutes or so of Let's Go Pikachu. Yes, yeah. yes, I did. But otherwise, you really haven't played too many of the other Not mainline really. games. Does this look like something, as someone from the outside, does this look like something that you would be interested in trying? Or is it just kind of more like, oh, this is just a thing? I think I'd be more likely to pick this one up because it has that whole exploring sort of thing that Go has with it. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I would you know, go out of my way to like buy a Switch and all that stuff when I don't already have one. But mm-hmm. it does look more interesting, like then I would have probably not picked up past Pokemon games. I mm. think the the extra things you can do do make it look a little more interesting. 
I'm still waiting to see if this has any kind of maybe Go connectivity. It mm-hmm. does. It does? It does. Through the uh, uh, Pokemon Home thing that we talked about last oh, week. Oh, right, right. The new yeah. Pokemon Bank. Yeah. So the Pokemon... Do you remember us talking about it a little bit? So, yeah. Yeah. So that thing connects to not only Pokemon Bank, but also Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, Pokemon and Pokemon Go, and Sword and Shield. So you can import anything oh. that pops up for those into this one. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Hmm. So that's so that's kind of neat, and I'm I'm looking forward to that. I'm actually kind of interested in seeing what the how the trading goes because you can actually trade from the phone app, mm. and that includes Sword and Shield hmm. stuff through the phone app, and that's actually kind of the first time they've done something like that as hmm. well. You know, I get the out. I get the point of Pokemon Bank and 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 then its extension Pokemon Home, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I always felt like it might have been kind of cheating a little importing your Pokemon from previous game into new game uh yes and no i mean i think it's more of an excuse for the designers to justify not putting all at this point what 800 and some odd yeah, things into one game because you know. by saying okay you can import things from the past games they can go okay well you can only get this these dozen or two dozen from like a game two from five or six years ago Mm -hmm. that way we don't have to put it in this brand new one save some space sure and the games already have a mechanic built in where like if you don't have a certain like check mark or badge or whatever it is anything over a certain level there's a chance it either you can't use or like there's a high percentage that it won't listen to what you're what you tell it and it just kind of makes it kind of functionally not very viable until True. you get to the to the end game basically. True. So I guess it kind of has that kind of checks and balance a little bit. It's still you're right, it is still kind of cheating a little bit. Yeah. But I can see them kind of justifying it a little bit. I can give them a pass a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I, I guess it's my personal thing is I like like when it comes to like Pokemon games, I like starting out and having the hardships in the beginning. Oh sure, yeah. That's always kind of the fun is starting from nothing and kind of building yourself up. That's yeah. part of it. Sure. But that's just that's just my personal take on oh, it. Oh sure, I mean, I, and you know I'm the same way. Well, I mean, there's nothing left for Pokemon Bank for me anyway because I stopped paying for that like two years ago. And they and, and they wipe it. And once you stop paying for it, they wipe your account and you lose like everything. I, I lost like 700 Pokemon because I decided not to give them five bucks. Huh, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, it keeps the it keeps the trading alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like oh well, clears I, up server space too. Yeah, it's like hey, I I need a Charizard. I need to find somebody who has a Charizard. Whatever. Whatever. Well, sure. And if you're not one of those people that likes to go around and collect them all, if you did that already, like I can see how if you didn't like that mechanic, that would get tedious. So mm. now you have them, and you can just import them. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And with, I think that's about it for I we for yeah we pretty much milk that for all it's worth. Milk you know, there's gonna be more. Yeah. I know there there's going to be a hands on. It's one of the E3 booth mm-hmm. space demos that Nintendo has out is um, Sword and Shield. So I'm interested in seeing what some reports of that from next week are going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, otherwise, yeah, that pretty much covered everything for Pokemon. From here, where do we want to go news wise? Hmm. Let's go from super positive to super garbage. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. Let's swim in that garbage. So speaking of swimming in garbage. Microsoft just decided <laughs> that they wanted to put out an Xbox branded body spray. Yeah, they t- yeah, it's uh it's Australia and New Zealand right now. <laughs> so you can't get it in, in the US. Oh, but no. it, but I'm sure it will come over here eventually. It's Xbox and Axe Body Spray have teamed up for a series of gamer scented <laughs> <laughs> We're going to smell that boat coming from across the ocean. We sure, we sure are. And I'll tell you what, I actually have a listing of what the scent is supposed to smell like here. Oh so I'm going to read this out. This is directly from the, the Microsoft <laughs> page. It's the Lynx Xbox is a fresh scent of pulsing green citrus featuring <laughs> top notes of kefir lime and winter lemon, aromatic herbal middle notes of mint and sage, and woody bottom notes of patchouli and clearwood. Mm. Now, I can't picture too much in the way of smells. <laughs> My nose doesn't work quite as well as some other people, but I'm pretty sure that smells like Mountain Dew and weed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're right. I, yeah? I'd back that. I'm pretty good at imagining smells. Okay. I would imagine that's what a 
an Xbox gamer smells like. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I can imagine what gamers smell like. I've been to a, a Smash Brothers tournament or two in my time. <laughs> I've been to, I've been to a magic competition. Ooh, that's rough. Yes. Ooh, that's rough. Yeah, you got me beat there. Yeah. <sighs> All right, well, I'm going to read the rest of this. It says, containing a range of natural essential oils, the Xbox Lynx range comes with a sleek new look and features a body spray, deodorant, and shower gel. So you got to, you can, it's a triple threat. You can layer that smell on and it'll last all day. Yeah. Oof. Oof a doofa. That is. I'm not sure I want my bathroom to smell like disappointment. (laughs) (laughs) I will applaud them for calling it Lynx. Mm-hmm. Because they haven't done that with an Xbox since the original Xbox. Yeah, that is kind of a that is kind of a callback a little bit. And this stuff is neon Xbox green. It is. You know, with my sensitive skin, I'm getting hives just thinking about it. Oh yeah, no, this is <laughs> this is rotten to the oh, core. Man, there's even like certain like old spice deodorants I can't use because it like it irritates. Oh, oh sure, yeah, no, I can, I believe that. And you know, because this is Axe. Not only does this is this going to smell bad, it's going to be strong, powerfully bad. It is going. You're going to smell these gamers from across the room. I mean, geez, the- patchouli like that. That <laughs> smells like hippies. Like right. <laughs> like I can get behind like citrusy smells. I like citrusy smells, but like, well, sure, a little bit here and there. Yeah, but, but you're like-, like knowing the way they formula their stuff. You're going to get basic, basically, it's going to be a truck driving by and it's going to hit you in the face with a cedar plank with a, with a lime nailed to it. What is a winter lemon? I think that's made up. Okay. <laughs> I don't believe that's a thing. Although kefir lime is a thing. So maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Okay. You have lime and lemon and mint. Yeah. Lemon, oh. lemon, lime, mint. That could work. Is, can that work? And sage. Sage, sage is where you're getting into weed yeah, territory. Yeah, sage yeah. smells an awful lot like cannabis. Yeah. Oof. And patchouli was, that's literally what they used patchouli for, was to cover the smell of, of weed back in the day. So. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> man. Uh. I'm never going to a Call of Duty thing. Um, <laughs> it's so. I understand what they're doing. Uh, Call I mean, of Duty at tournaments don't smell like this. <laughs> they're going to. I'm sure they're going to go gangbusters and make a lot of money. Oh, sure. Oh, they're going to make a ton of cash on this. They'll probably do enough that they'll make a second cent. It'll probably smell like Cheetos. Mm, delicious. <laughs> Doritos and lavender. I put a tarp down <laughs> and a bunch of crushed up Doritos and just opened up every Axe body spray and just lathered around, just rolled around in it. Get some cool ranch up in there. <laughs> mm, delicious. We call this flavor Locos, t- Locos Tacos. <laughs> Oh. oh, wowzer. Okay. Our new flavor, or our new scent, Sticky Controller. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you player twos out there. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Okay. So you know what? We were talking about some earthy smelling smells. So uh, let's talk about some Swamp Thing. <laughs> All right. Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing. So the DC Universe app has been putting out shows. They did the Titans, which was... R-rated from what Teen I, Titans. From what I understand, was was pretty good. It's getting a second season. It did pretty well. And is, that Doom, where, is that where Robin did a swear? That's where Robin did a swear. Okay. That's correct. And then people got really mad because of how Starfire and Beast Boy looked. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, they were Mostly mad, Starfire. More, mostly Starfire because people have bad opinions about things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they did the Doom Patrol, which was a really great limited series. Just wrapped up. Brandon I, Fraser. I loved it. Brandon Fraser. His robot, back is, to, is robot uh, man. Yeah. Yeah, calling back to the uh, the mummy talk from earlier. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. Um, he does a lot of swears. In fact, he <laughs> okay, swears good. almost constantly. <laughs> like every other word is a swear. Um, isn't isn't uh, Timothy Timothy Dalton, Dalton? Yeah. is the chief in this as well? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, a double call back there. Yeah. Um. So their third show that they put that they released, they released two episodes of it at this point. Uh, Swamp Thing. Which uh, I love the character. I love Swamp Thing. I remember mm-hmm. the movies. I remember the TV series, mm-hmm. comics. I I'm a huge, huge Swamp Thing fan. And after two episodes, DC Universe decided to cancel the series, which is a bummer. Mm-hmm. But it's not for like ratings reasons or anything like that. As it turns out, Swamp Thing is too expensive to make. <laughs> you think they would have thought of that somehow? You would think. You would think. No, as it turns out, they filmed a lot of the show in North Carolina. 
And a lot of it was based, a lot of the show's budget was based around North Carolina's film and television tax credit right? thing. Tax credit thing. Basically to entice studios to come film there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's a big thing for Southern states. Georgia is a huge one. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. They shoot a lot of stuff in Georgia. They shoot a ton of stuff in Georgia. Um, there before they kind of changed things around, they used to shoot a lot of stuff up in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. I think Ohio's um, film and television tax break, it's changed. That's why they don't really do too much. I mean, they shot the days. Avengers in Toledo, Cleveland, Cleveland is Cleveland. Yeah. They've shot the first one in Cleveland because it looks like New York, but they yeah, yeah. changed because of the tax rate thing. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, they yeah. changed it to Toronto and Atlanta. Yeah, where Toronto the, get, Toronto gets a lot of play for a lot of stuff for too. the other ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but due to a clerical error, Warner Brothers got back significantly less than what they were than promised. Than what they were promised. I think it was like they originally had budgeted for twenty million dollars in tax breaks, and they only received twelve. Yeah, hmm. which sounds like a ton of money, but I mean, it is a ton of money. But... It's a ton of money. I mean, I could do a Swamp Thing show for twelve million dollars. <laughs> hey, someone give me twelve million dollars! But uh, seriously, but no. Um, <laughs> yeah, it just kind of boggles my mind that you could say, "Hey, this show, you're only getting twelve million dollars to do this show," and the response is, "Well, we're gonna cut three episodes off of the season and cancel it." Yeah, it's kind of crazy that they didn't they didn't plan ahead that that's not enough money for you to keep making a television show. Like, yeah, yeah, and I think part of this comes back to the idea like of studios looking at the Netflix model and going, "Oh, hey, we could do that," mm-hmm. not realizing that Netflix is a multi billion dollar operation because so many people already have Netflix I mean, and they've Netflix, generated so much cash. Netflix is almost a utility at this point. At this point, just about. And you have people like DC Universe or the CBS All Access, which are both Warner apps, which I don't understand why they're separate apps. It's kind of split in the market, yeah. which is their, which has come back to bite them because that's to, why they're not fair, making the money. To be fair, Disney's doing the same thing. They own Hulu and they have... Like they own 100% of Hulu now, Mm -hmm. but they're still rolling out Disney Plus. There's a difference though, because I think Hulu is going to be their ABC and Fox stuff where people are going to pay out the nose for the Disney Plus app. I'll pay it. I'm going to pay it. Yeah, sure. Um, Anyway, yeah, it's just kind of weird to me that... They, they split it like that. That they, yeah, that they're splitting the market and it's, again, it's coming back to bite them because... (laughs) <laughs> Neither one of their apps are making enough money to produce their own shows. Anyway, we've hit time, so let's go ahead and wrap things up for the week. Before we do that, Jordan, thank you very much for being part of the show. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. So uh, anyway, you've been listening to Nerd Overload. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com. You can find us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram at Nerd Overload Now. We have an email address, staff at nerdoverload.com, if you want to have any comments or questions or uh, topic ideas. Ideas, mm-hmm. uh, send them in. You could subscribe to our YouTube channel you know, for any of our visual content. Just do a search for Nerd Overload. Yep. It's the best way yep. to do Nerd it. Nerd Overload TV. Uh, some, yeah, I think I, you can I'm still not find Cody. That. This is not my part. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. We're also on various podcast aggregators like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, places like that. We have t-shirts you can buy. Yeah. And you can follow, follow the store link on our website or you could go to bit.ly forward slash nerd overload t t e e mm-hmm. we have a patreon patreon.com backslash nerd overload now if you want to support the show get the show a little bit early you know some other cool stuff head over there and i want to thank uh, david pencil for the use of our intro and outro you can find more of his music over at davidpencil.com so anyway i think that's pretty much has it so uh thank you all again for listening and we will be back next week pizza out <laughs>